Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Polk. Happy Podiversary, Will. Happy Podiversary, Sarah. Podiversary. Did yeah. Did you invent that word, or I did, did not. you see other podcasts I, do it? I saw other podcasts do it. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> so what, well, five? Yes, yes, uh, yeah. It was just like I, I know it's all. I know the end of January is always the first time we we record it. But I, I was looking at the, looking back through the ar- archives and realized it was January twenty seventh, twenty seventeen, the first episode that uh, that Matt posted for us. <laughs> I don't know time. what makes me feel like old. What two thousand seventeen was five years. Yeah. Ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. It doesn't feel that far away, but damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, but it, it really, I know, it was like five years. But I mean, I've enjoyed the ride. It's just been so much fun. It just seems like we just started yesterday. But when I was like looking at the archives and it's been like five years that we've been doing this together, I'm like, wow, wow, we've, we've covered a, a lot of stuff in that five years. Yeah, and the flash is still on the air. Yeah, <laughs> somehow. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. it's only it only feels like we just started yesterday because the flash is currently in hiatus <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you when you think about where that show is you're like yeah it's been a while it's been <laughs> a while been yeah a i know things. yeah because actually our, our very first at the top yeah that was our very first episode it was in the se- season three and and we were and we at that point we were spending the whole hour on on one show because at that point you know it was Arrowverse talk and I was still getting, still learning my way, and yeah, and, and listen, I was listening to some of our conversation about it, and and how positive and how we really got into it before, and now it's just like, hmm. <laughs> so what you're saying is five years will make uh, made us more cynical about these. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe critical. Maybe more critical for sure. Maybe more critical and. Uh, <laughs> Plus, the landscape has completely changed as far when I when I when you, when I think about looking at the topics that we're going to cover tonight and and all the shows that have come since then. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's a little more cynical, a little bit more maybe, and, and also a little bit more um, more critical and and also it's just you got to bring the shit now if you're going to like stay up there with some of the things that are on the, on the air these days. Well, it is. I mean, I have not returned to Boba Fett. And I know, I feel like I keep seeing things like it's getting better and everything. But I'm like, I still don't have any desire to go back yeah. there. Well, I, I haven't watched this week's episode yet. I did mm-hmm. watch episode four. And mm-hmm. and it, it, it was it was better. It, of the ones I've watched, it was, I, I enjoyed it. But at the same time, it was, it, it, you know, they, Disney. I, I think the, the Mandalorian sets such a high bar, and 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 I think the other thing that with Boba Fett and and and, and I was talking about with this the thing, it's sort of like the Han Solo film. We knew about this character already, mm-hmm. and and I think you know, and then I think with Boba with Boba Solo, it was one of those things where. We didn't really need an origin story for Han Solo. I mean, we 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 kind of knew who he is. We know who he was, and and it's just and it's like the same with Boba Fett in the sense that we know who the character is. I mean, we're all bringing our collective baggage about that character to the show. Then you add on the top of it, the Mandalorian, which was a new character, and really in season two, just just I mean, it was a home run. I mean, no doubt about it. Um, and so I think that's part of why that show is having such a hard time. I mean, I, I even saw where Peacemaker is like kicking his tail in, in the in the streaming ratings, right, at this point. Because, um, you know, because again, I think that what, we just, what we just talked about, and plus, I mean, Peacemaker is, is really bringing something, the more I watch this, that show, uh, the the more I it, it is it's becoming like the boys to me and then Doom Patrol for me where I'm like I'm really really digging the show and it's like becoming appointment streaming time for me versus Boba Fett yeah I'll get to it when I get to it yeah no I mean I was gonna say I even managed to 
watch um, the most recent episode of Peacemaker right before we started recording. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it is growing on me. It really is. It's. I, I think I was a bit hard on it last week. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, rightfully so. I mean, yeah. Will's always going to be Mr. Positive. I have to come in with me. <laughs> <Yeah. here. laughs> I need some balance here. Um, yeah. but, but it is coming along, um, and, and the relationships that I think I gravitated the most, they're really utilizing. And I think that's why I'm getting more engaged into the story and, um, eagerly better watch out, Will. Eagerly better watch yeah. out because Vigilante <laughs> is making a <laughs> comeback for that, for like stealing the show. Vigilante is pretty good. <laughs> He is pretty good. That, yeah, that I was gonna say. I think my favorite character on the show right now is Vigilante. Yeah, and it took me. It took me a while. Like I should have. I should have realized who was playing Vigilante, hmm. just because he was in the first season of Unscripted, which is an old Lifetime show. If you've never watched Unscripted, I highly recommend it. Especially oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, he, I remember you talking played, about. That show. Yeah, he played The Bachelor on that hmm. show. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Freddie St- Strowman, Strowman, yeah, and he was Stroman, also in the yeah. Harry Potter series. Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. also in there. So, um, but I've I've just never seen him in this role, and um, I feel like him and John Cena could go off and do what um, Kevin Hart and The Rock do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but better. <laughs> they, they could. Yeah. They could after it, the show. And better. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I know one of the news items that uh, that uh, I put on the rundown the day was uh, that Peacemaker James Gunn was was talking to Deadline and a couple other folks today, and and there is the possibility that uh, there there that HBO will renew it for a season two, which I was really surprised at this point that that that, that given how so many streaming properties get renewed automatically these days, that that show hadn't. Uh, had already gotten a renewal and then the second thing is that with peacemaker is well the the suicide squad movie itself uh there's talks of preliminary talks of having a second spinoff show from that film so you know we got to have it be the mouse (laughs) well i mean will we shouldn't be surprised it's dc yeah well look something works let's suddenly make all of these promises only like two of them are going to come true yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Where is Gotham PD? <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> it's in development, like the Penguin Show. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like the Penguin. Like, there's all of this stuff. But um, my one criticism, though, is I, I didn't like this. This show works when it leans more into the comedy and everything mm-hmm. it, it's not a show that needs big epic twists and so last week's episode when it ended that um the leader of the squad is a butterfly yeah. i was just like really yeah really? like like that's not it's, it wasn't shocking i remember watching it and i'm like oh i wonder if he's a butterfly actually so even though I know for you it wasn't shocking, it it did it was for it was one of those things where I, I was I, I did like point at the screen and I was like huh, and I, so I, it was it was I, I liked it because um, it did give some you know there was always something about that character that was more than just okay we can't afford to have Viola Davis come be a part of the series for like you know six episodes or whatever but but well, you don't same... want to make her a butterfly exactly well you don't want to make her a butterfly but also we needed that amanda waller type character without having amanda waller and she wasn't even that amanda wallery yeah true <laughs> true well i mean yeah yeah but i mean just to play that role was as far as like being the leader of the team uh and and so i think it was it was it was it gave some motivations for like okay because it, it built on this mystery because that's that's kind of like the element that's sort of in the background it's like we we have this mystery of the butterflies where we're exploring 
Peacemaker, Chris Smith's like role here in the show where he is where we he's not he's not an anti-hero he's not quite a villain but he's michael scott from the office he is that's the perfect thing you're, you're rooting for the guy because he's just yeah even though there is something just, like yeah. he is he is there is so many things that is wrong with him mm-hmm. but at the end of the day he just wants wants to be liked yes he he, he there Everything with his childhood and his past is all dark, and he recognizes that. So he's built this this exterior, but like Loda says, it, it's all just an act. And like underneath it all, if he just be be himself, then people actually do like him, despite yeah. what he was brought up to believe about yeah. himself. Yeah, yeah, I think that you're right. Michael Scott's the best. That's probably the best description I've heard. Uh, uh, about Peacemaker from anyone because you that you, you you nailed it you nailed it and um and especially when you when you this episode where we you know getting back to the um, vigilante and 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 Peacemaker together and this that whole that whole bit while they were in the car and and talking about uh, you know Peacemaker's dad and and and, and it, the the whole like you didn't stand up for me when I was getting tortured and you know all that the whole right, buddy the right. whole bit he, and and the passive the passive aggressiveness of of the vigilante like the look that he gave peacemaker whenever they were ha- you know at the end of that scene it was just like he could he could have murdered him right then and there but it was just that that interplay and he really and and really is still in the show. With, with every scene and especially like whenever uh he was in the prison with uh augie and the and the other white supremacist and i just i, I was just like it was one again like i said i think with the first ep- our, our talk of with the first three episodes there's there's bits in there that i shouldn't be laughing at but it's just it's just just so daggone funny <laughs> I mean, it there, really there, there's there's some good as the show progresses i really like the the uh, chemistry with the cast. The cast mm-hmm. overall has some pretty good chemistry. Mm-hmm. Um, I still disagree with you about the leader. I I just there. It was so. It was to me. I found it to be very telegraphed. And yeah. Um, yeah. But and I think it might have been even more interesting. And maybe they still will end up doing that. I don't know. But if Hargrave is a butterfly because she's the one that Chris is also kind of going after yeah. um, and likes. And so I think that would be an interesting twist in that whole dynamic um, because so far it's been kind of like, yeah, we've seen this before. Okay. Moving on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course, Loda and Peacemaker, like them be being friends and um, they're the parallels that are drawn between them. I think it's just is why this show is, is doing so well. Yeah. Um, beyond everything else we just talked about. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Uh, I I I think you're right, and I know they they keep James Gunn keeps talking about there's going to be some twist at the end, and maybe that is one of them that Harcourt is that is is also a butterfly, and you know that that could be one of those mind blowing things. But um, yeah, I mean, or or something maybe with Augie. I mean, you know, Augie is, he, he's irredeemable. I mean, I don't think there's anything that we can, we can expect, or, or, or maybe we'll learn more about Chris and what happened with his brother. And because yeah. I mean, that was one of the very interesting, that was one of the things that they did dive into. I mean, out of bio did, she did talk about the foul. And then of course, Harcourt based went further and, and really talked about, you know, the government suspecting that he has had something to do with his with his brother's death. Right. So, right. So, yeah. So, I mean, it's just a lot of a lot of like really great things that they've set up here in the show. I know we talked I know earlier uh, you, you, you kind of talked me down because it was, you know, with all the parallels with the boys and and all and, and, and Doom Patrol and some of the other shows that we really enjoy. But. I mean, it, it it really is like getting into that echelon of, of of those shows, and and like I said, each week it's becoming more and more one of my favorites. Uh, things to look forward to. 
Definitely. Um, things that we cannot look forward to happening this year. Um, Marvel has a, reportedly removed Secret Invasion and what if season two from this year's calendar schedule. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> as long as they don't mess with Doctor Strange too, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I think so too. I mean, we we got a lot of content last year. I mean, it was it was it was hard to keep up with after a while. <laughs> yeah. It, it it was a lot. I mean, they made up for 2020, and and then so maybe this year would be the good year to spread things out. Like we used to have what maybe what three Marvel movies a year. What what was the sort of the the cadence before? So I'm okay with that. I saw yeah, and I saw this was like in in one of the more reputable sources so it wasn't like just just some random blogger like posting so um so yeah so if that does happen i'm okay with that too yeah definitely and then in other movie news the batman director matt reeves says the film is inspired by 1970s cinema 1980s comic books and nirvana and you know what i say to that well i say Pretty much Nolan talked about how his trilogy was inspired by similar things. So whoop de whoop. Just give us the damn movie. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was a I there was a article in Esquire where he uh, I guess he he had was interviewed for it about the time he finished the primary uh, principal photography late, late last year. And um and you know, he talked about those influences and he and but really he really got into how he was really trying to paint a different Batman. And we, we, I know we I mean, a lot of, we've, we've heard about this and, and all, but, you know, he really got into it deeper as far as, you know, as far as into, you know, Nolan, you know, he you know, talked about the Nolan's take on the character and all the origin stories and not doing that over again and really getting into this guy who is, on the edge and what's keeping him from completely going over the edge and, and, you know, really getting into the whole psychological thriller and, and detective noir, which I know we've talked about that before and film noir with, 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 with this version of the film. So, I mean, given that they're, you know, going at the, you know, Godfather esque length of two, almost three hours, then I could see that. <laughs> yeah. But that's not really noir. I mean, well, no, 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 but more 1920s or 1930s cinema than 1970s cinema. I mean, 1970s yeah. cinema is more about um, rebels and um, outsiders. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. I know. Well, I guess there is that. It's too. just, it's just weird to me when they say like 1970s cinema and 1980s. Well, think, yeah, but I think he was looking more. I think he's. I think he referenced like Taxi Driver as the 1970s cinema that they were really trying to like emulate. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, I. How do I? How do I put this? It's not that it's uninspired. It's just nothing where I'm like, oh, that will be a refreshing take. <laughs> I just, I don't know. To me, I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Let me see the movie and then I'll, I'll figure it out. So for everyone listening, the Skype crashed and I don't know how to transition out of this topic now. <laughs> I really <laughs> don't. <laughs> uh. So, so Will might do some editing work. I don't know. He might just like leave it in here and it'd be really awkward, completely <laughs> up to him. Um, but we're, we have exhausted the Batman topic and i um, still looking forward to the movie, but we do have three other shows to talk about tonight. Um, so on yeah. that note, let's talk about yeah. Naomi, or as I like to call her, Superman Jr. <laughs> Not so much this week. <laughs> okay. It, she is literally Superman Jr. She is Supergirl. She, yeah. Um not necessarily in powers and capabilities yet. There's still a lot to be known, but this week I'm just like, wow, they're they're really wow. <laughs> <laughs> They, huh? I felt I'm. I think I um, fell more in love with Peacemaker this week, mm. and Naomi is just staying staying steady. It's not that they're taking step backwards; 
No. It's just like, it's just, I'm still trying to figure out what this show wants to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, so I do have some issues this week, um, with the parents, the parents, I understand what they were doing, but I'm with Naomi. They acted very strange this episode. And for a while I was like, are they aliens? Cause, well, cause they are just like very strange. <laughs> well, here's the interesting thing about the alien bit because, and, and in particular to dad, and if, originally, I thought the mom might have been an alien. Yes, definitely. But yeah, and maybe they'll maybe they'll twist some things from the comic because in the comic, so D it, it, it is, you know, he is a uh, Thagonar, and you remember, and and now again, Krypton again is we can always come back to Krypton and speaking of Superman because remember that show Adam Strange was work was working with the people of Ran. And and so the and and whenever the second season ended, you know, we went to Thagonar and they were about to get into a war with people of Ran. And so picking up with Naomi, uh, in the comic, Naomi's adoptive father is a, is an alien from Ran. And so he and D, whenever the twenty nine were. Um, Whenever they were escaping from Naomi's Earth to come to our to to, to Earth Prime, whatever you know, in, in the DC universe, they they fought together to to rescue her, and and then the alien father married Naomi's adoptive mother, and they they protected her on Earth. So, I feel like you just spoiled the entire arc of this season for me. Like, I feel as though the writers should be really mad at you for it just as I'm like, you know what? I'm still trying to figure out this show. And you're like, well, Sarah, this is what happens in the books. So you can now see where this is probably well, going to go. <laughs> you can see where it's well, but they, they did do some changes from the book. Into, oh, yeah. I, I see yeah. changes, but the yeah, root yeah. of it is safe. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and I think, but I mean, it, you know, the, the twist will maybe be the mother this time instead of the. And I, I told you, I was like, I, I, no, but they were together yeah. already. Right. They right. were they were already together. Yeah. So uh, that's, they, yeah, but, and even if it is the mom, though, I don't, I don't know. We we can go back and forth about that. Um. But but anyways, um, this episode. We don't find out who's the alien, who's not the alien. We do find out, though, that they are very much aware Mm -hmm. that their daughter is an alien. Yeah. We do. Yeah, we get that. It's like another superhero we know. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's no doubt there's definitely parallels between... uh, And I I guess that makes sense for why Naomi is such a a, a big fan of of, of Kyle-El. Um... And yeah, and there's clear parallels between the two characters for sure. Uh, but um, I mean, I, you know, but getting to the show itself, I it, it is growing on me. I mean, I, I think I, I it's I, I think I, I I will stick with it. I I I'm, I'm on board now because I I am curious as to see how this all unfolds. Uh, this this third episode, you know, we we've talked about before. Is, you know, give up, give shows, you know, three ep- three to four episodes. To, to really get its footing, and and I we feel like we have talked about that. <laughs> that's <laughs> your three episode. Rule. Yeah, my uh, well, that's my that's my that's my rule. That's my my three episode rule. And 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 true to form, it the third episode was the one where I was like, okay, I, I see where they're going here. I'm gonna stick with this because uh, usually by that third episode, I know if I'm a if I'm a bell or not. And and this is one where I, where I'm not going to bell. Um, I know I know some of the supporting characters are still kind of iffy, but uh, but I think the core the core cast and 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 the way they ended this week with the parents they didn't you know they didn't hold back on that and I guess they only have what, 13 episodes so sort of like other shows now they're they're really taking they're really going taking advantage of the, the, the shorter episode runs that there's there's not as much filler as we that we're used to seeing with some of these shows uh i i i still i still feel and this is what i wanted to try to 
my points of the show is that I still feel like Naomi and Dee are in one show Mm -hmm. and everybody else is in a different show. Yeah. Especially Zimbabwe. (laughs) Like (laughs) this whole weird sequence of him going to meet Akira and us finding out information like there was something so bizarre about the way that those scenes were shot and maybe it's intentional but in my from my opinion it didn't really work because it just it felt i don't know it it was weird it was it was weird um it just felt jarring, I guess is the way I would put it, where especially if how they were edited, um, because they start, I believe they started the show with him and Akira. And then they go into the episode to the point where you forget about it. And at the at three quarter mark, they go back into it and you're like, oh, OK, so they're doing a circle thing. Mm-hmm. And then the episode continued. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait, so you're not bookending it. So Mm. weird, weird choices, weird choices. But yeah, yeah, Yeah. I I don't know if I'm as curious. I'm just, it's fine. I've seen worse. I've seen worse. It's been five years, guys. I've seen worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's, there, I think the other thing too is I was looking at some of the demographic data, uh, as far as far as some of the ratings and and where this show is working, and it is it is working. Interestingly enough, it's actually working better with older audiences, and like over and so, and and uh, you know, so like I think there were some beats in it, and, and maybe this is me as a parent who is. Uh, who uh, you know? I have uh, getting like all the letters for like college coming and, and for my for my, my oldest kid and, and 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 so the parent thing, even though I was like you know not as bad, I've never been as bad as Naomi's parents, but you know those little beats and there's a little, there's like various themes in the show that like just like with Superman and Lois, I think that I identify with. So maybe that's where I'm like, oh okay, I could maybe that's the the thematic things that and storytelling beats that I'm like, Oh yeah. Okay. I, I get that. Or, and, 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 but you're, but you're right. I mean, the, the stuff with Zimbabwe and, and Akira were to your point felt like it was a different show in, in some regards. Um, and then, like I said, the, the supporting, you know, the, 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 the budding love story or triangle between, uh, it's a square. The square at this point, yeah, yeah, with the Nathan Lourdes, Lords and Lourdes and uh, it's a weird Scooby Doo yeah. gang because they yeah. all like her, are yeah. in her, yeah, except for except for the one for except for the the one girl. Uh, well, that can change. Yeah, <laughs> but it is a square because they're all like are trying to like you know because last week with they they were like yeah let's just be friends for now and then Nathan's like. You're, you know, there's our ex, and then there's definitely like the, the yeah, absolute, we have yeah. friend zoned each and every part of the square, mm-hmm. but it's, it's still square. A square yeah. is still a square. Yeah, yeah, it is a square. All right, I'm glad we got that covered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the takeaway from this conversation. A square yeah. is square, and there's something about 29, but we're not going to go there because we don't really know a whole lot, and I don't want Will to spoil any more of season okay. one for me. <laughs> okay, I also well, I mean, I think they they, they gave you enough in the episode to know that the 29 are just I mean, yeah, that, that, that's not a huge spoiler. And then he's going to tell me about number 30. <laughs> no, 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 there's no 30. There's no 30. I, I can safely say, at least, at least in season one, there's no 30. <laughs> yeah. So, so Will, I have another yeah. bone to pick with you. Okay. I do. Because I was on Twitter two nights ago. Yeah. And what do I see at the top of my, my timeline? I see Will talking about Superman and Lois and saying, oh. wow, twist well done. <laughs> <laughs> I think so I just... went to this episode and I'm like, okay, well, there's going to be a twist. And I don't know, within the first 10 minutes, I'm like, oh, they're doing Bizarro Super. <laughs> 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 and then by the end of it, I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. yeah, I'm sorry. I, 
I try not to. I try to be very careful about my my, twi- my tweeting on Tuesday because I know I know you're like on, especially now that you're on more. And 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 I, I was hoping that it would somehow get wouldn't get you, you're the K-pop. It wouldn't get like mixed in with all that, you know. But I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry to spoil it. Sorry to spoil it. it, it I you know I considering how that was written. I, I I would like to think, had I not even had it in my back in my mind that there was a twist coming, that I would have been like, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> there was <laughs> one point in the early, early on in the episode where um, Los's father even says Bizarro. Mm, like, yeah, like somebody did. even drops that nugget. So I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. However, despite that, episode was solid. Um, I like, I thought it was, I thought an interesting thing that happened in this episode that I did not see coming, which I should have seen coming, but I didn't, was when Jonathan purchased um, the kryptonite. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to be an interesting angle. I also appreciate how it's not because of competition with his brother, Mm-hmm. So much as the football angle. Yeah. yeah. Um, because that could have been like, we're always very worried about that. Like, okay, we two brothers. Yeah. Um, but I like that. And as, as per usual, everything that they do with John Henry Irons is always just like, great, just cherry on top. Mm-hmm. Um, but my last thing that I want to put out there is just, we spent a lot of time with this show and talking about how um, Bitsy does such a good job as Lois. I Mm -hmm. feel like with this episode in particular, Tyler is really getting to shine as both Superman and Clark Kent. And, and, and there were so many great moments of acting in this episode by him. So I want to finally give him his, his, applaud for that um because we don't tr- intentionally try to overlook him <laughs> it's just really hard <laughs> yeah yeah i mean bitsy's been killing it this season i mean she has throughout the series but you're right, right. So I, yeah um yeah to, to pick up your point on jonathan uh it, that was so so in character for him because yeah. the football the whole the from season one coming from metropolis where he was the you know the the Patrick Mahomes of his team, and then yeah. now he is you know, you know bench rider and 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 that was I, I liked the way they did that and was good instead of doing the forced drama between the brothers which you know we we already we already saw that last season with when when Jordan got on the football team so I'm glad they didn't really like rehash that again by him taking that script tonight and. But to Tyler, to Tyler's point, yeah, I mean, he's a haymaker in and of itself. When he, how he just like played that, played that so well when Jonathan, um, you know, sucker punched him uh, with the, uh, uh, you know, whenever they were having the, the fight where with the football team and and how how well acted that was. And I was reading how he talked about the, that with that that scene and how he just just rolled, you know, he didn't like look at the various cuts. He just knows how to play it and that was and you know because think about it because when you think about it rationally i mean if if jonathan really did like pop punch his dad like that i mean he would have broke his hand <laughs> but, right. but, but you know he just intuitively knew and also just that duality you know the whole thing with clark kent and being the bumbling guy and 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 and, and you know consistent with what people knew him from from, from smallville and 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 then also just at the end with with the bizarro and whenever when the reveal did happen and and, and pl- having to play the the opposite version of himself um you know and we did get the, we did get the doppelganger obviously with the last season too but I, I think the way you know but clearly they're going to take that to a different place this season with, with Bizarro and, 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 and also, um, you know, will we, will it be Lex who was on the other part of the call or was it whenever the, the doctor, the minds 
the geologist called, or was it Lieutenant Lieutenant Anderson? I mean, I'm thinking it's Anderson, but uh, but because but you know it, it could be Lex as well because I mean Lex was behind Bizarro to begin with it, it, anyway as far as you know making him a Don't clone Superman into the show yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring, don't go there. Don't okay. go. There. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's no. I'm, just, I'm yeah. warning the writers because we know yeah. that they sometimes listen to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes what they do. Yeah, but speaking of Krypton again, one of the one of the writers was one of the script writers from Krypton yep. on the show this week. So it uh, again that you know we keep, I know we keep going back to that show, but uh, it. You know, we saw that version of Doomsday there, and then how they, you know, you know, Todd Hybring with the with the you know previous showrunner to Flash, and you know, is is very good at like doing the doing the head fakes, and you know, he put it out there that oh yeah, we're doing Doomsday, and then you know, pulls pull pulls out D- Bizarro instead. You know, again, it, it was well executed, even though you're right, probably was telegraphed. If I was really paying close, really thinking about it critically, but. I still thought it was well executed. Yeah, it 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 was it was it was good, um, but not as good as the shot of when John Henry Irons gets oh. into his suit. Yes, that was like so, yeah. Like what the heck was that? Where yeah. has that been? Like Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that was so dope. I was like, I, I was like, just applauded in my seat there, just like when that when that happened. But also, you know, speaking of John Henry and 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 his daughter uh, Natalie, and the and the well, given that he that he talked about how we're in a new Earth and we're going to start things different, and now here we are in Smallville and we're back to wearing the suit again. And and then they had that conversation in the barn about upgrading the suit, and she was like. And, and, and him continuing to help Clark with Superman with with this latest challenge, mm-hmm. and and she embraced it. She's like mainly because she wants to make sure she doesn't lose her dad because that's all she has left now. Well, yeah, she she's doing exactly what she did on their Earth, which mm-hmm. is just work work with him to keep him safe. Um, but I do like how how it's it's kind of contradictory and um and 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 i i think she knows that there's more to it that he's not yet and there's a lot more um that they're 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 the whole lowest of it all all the lowest of it all is always going to be there and it's not going away anytime soon it's not it's not yeah, and 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 yeah, and we haven't even you know touched on Lois and and her dad and 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 her sister coming, and 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 a cult leader like showing up in town. It's like I know what you're doing, I know what you're doing, and and Lois and and her dad, again, great actor by Bitsy and he, and even Dylan Walsh. I mean, as far as playing General Lang, and and he realizing like you know I he. he I mean, what I, what I think the thing that really works for this show for me is how they're just really, like, one, they're, like, all these side stories, they, they're meaningful side stories. They're not just, like, like other shows where you have these B-plots. They just kind of just don't go anywhere. Things from, like, the first season and then moving it to into the second season and, and having these side stories, the supporting characters having... Their arcs. I mean, they're they're fully fleshed out, and that's the other thing about these characters. They're fully fleshed out people, and and I think that's what takes the show makes you know makes it very a, a very solid watch because they are they're taking it's a superhero show, but then that but we we, we you know, the superhero stuff. Yeah, it's there, but then we're dealing with these other family dynamics and uh, and things and 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 they're dealing with dealing with them in a realistic way. Yeah. That's what, yeah. 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 I mean, cult leaders um brainwash your sister. Yep, very yeah. realistic. Um I I don't I don't know why I'm like not wanting to deep down deep dive into that plot point is because there's still so much we don't know. 
about that direction. And that was definitely um, plot B of this episode. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and I, I'm, I guess right now, now that we've seen the cult leader, when are we going to see Lucy? That that's my big question. Are we going to get a flashback episode with what happened when it sounded like she almost killed herself? Mm-hmm. Um, are we going to see flashbacks of like, and when are we going to meet Lois's mom? You know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That's, yeah, keep still, that's still like a seed that I don't know if we're going to get it this season or next season, but it's yeah. definitely going to happen at some point. It's going to happen. I think, yeah, I think Lucy will probably show up in either next episode or the following episode. I think, I think I want to say, I mean, because they, well, they, they teased it out. No, no, I'm just saying they've teased it out long enough. I mean, at some point they're going to have to like, she's going to have to show up in Smallville. Yeah, or, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, we got one more show to talk about tonight. Um, Batwoman, of course, and <laughs> Ivy. Is, this is pretty much Ivy's show. Um, but even though they've kind of wrapped up that storyline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of little bit quickly <laughs> yeah I, you know i, I got I, I haven't been feeling the show as much since the since they returned this from the mid-season break yeah yeah well i see i even even last the first there's something about this season that i'm just like it's it's not it's not that it's not working yeah. it's just that it feel there's nothing there's nothing really grabbing me yeah. As much as in the previous seasons. Um the the like like initially the whole Ivy storyline and um like like and Mary like like I like that all of that. I like how we were we always talk about this, how they've managed to integrate Alice into this um season. Um but but there's still other parts that always come back, like the whole Jada of it all. <laughs> yeah. First of all, how does Ryan forget that deadline? <laughs> <laughs> Just, yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. It was so weird to me because, and I'll be honest, I kind of forgot the deadline too. However, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, really? You yeah. just completely forgot about that. And yeah. And I guess they're trying to make, I, I mean, I get where they were going, where they were trying to like, okay, I, they put, Brian's put Mary to the to the back all season. And then, so now she's going to like save her. But yeah. <laughs> cause honestly, yeah. the, yeah. Cause honestly the first like 15 minutes or so of the episode, I was, I, I, I ended up like, I was just kind of like, okay. I, I really didn't get into it until Oh gosh! I mean, it. I guess until Jada actually showed up and demanded the the, the deadline, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's when I was like, oh okay, let me. Okay, things are getting a little interesting here. But I don't know. It's just like it's just a, it just feels like there's only like it, the, the show feels inco- talk about sh- two different shows or are show feeling yeah. incom- uh, incomplete. Yeah. I just feel like this this back half is just some whatever reason it's just feeling incomplete. I, I feel as though, like what we were just saying before with Superman and Lois, we, we have the whole Bizarro storyline happening, but we have these B cl- plots. We have a B cl- plot with Lois. We have the C plot with the boys. And then we have John Henry Irons out here. And the, the writers managed to integrate that all to make it feel like a cohesive episode. Mm-hmm. With that woman this season, it always feels like, Especially with this, there's a clear path they went with Ivy. Mm-hmm. And then they also had this whole thing going on with Ryan's family, yeah. the biological family. And they tried to cohesively twist those together. But overall, it feels as though it's two separate show arcs. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially in this episode, it's literally treated as a different arc where they're like, Jada comes, starts the episode, and then she goes away, and uh, it's full Ivy, and then she Jada returns at the end. And you're like, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, okay. yeah, and come back at the end, 
I guess they try to. I guess they try to use Renee Montoya as the the thread to tie the, the two storylines together, especially with Jada, and with 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 helping with Renee helping Batman collect all the all the trophies from all the prime. Yeah, but that people. wasn't originally what. Yeah. The thing with Montoya though is Montoya was all about the collecting all of the the trophies, mm-hmm. right? And then right. we find out, well, that's because she's trying to get to Ivy. Yeah. Okay, great. Love that. But we didn't find out that Ryan's brother is a psychopath until, like, episode seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it came out of nowhere. And then they went full Joker. And so now they're trying to, like, twist that in because you have the buzzer mm-hmm. and it's, uh, I don't know. There's something so contrived about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it really is. And, and it's like, yeah, I mean, it, 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 like I said, it, it really, it, they, it feels that they have a lot of good ideas. And, and I guess the one, the one thing I do like about this season is and I, I know I mentioned this last week. It, it, we, we're past Kate, and I, and I do feel like Ryan is fully becoming her. She's becoming to own the city as far as just being Batwoman. And then I think and I, and I think it with the up, looking at the preview for next week's episode with Jada, because Ryan failed to follow through with with the deadline. Uh, you know, I think you know that that will you know that'll definitely be the, the the driving force for the for the remaining episodes and then you know and 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 we had this nice little arc with mary and, and a team based you know they used this whole ivy storyline to basically show the value of mary to the team and and how uh i guess as they, they as the bat team has has has, has grown over the you know, with all the changes, uh, you know how each person does have have a role. Even even <laughs> even though I love the I love the little uh, unemployed line that Mary threw out to uh, to Sophie. <laughs> yes, thank you. This is why Mary's my favorite character. Finally, yes. someone calls it out. Yes. What? How does she pay her bills? Oh, she paid bills. <laughs> she, yeah, because I mean, I think all of Jacob Kane's assets were frozen, so I don't know where where the money's coming from. It's not like she's. I guess she's drawing un- unemployment. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Don't understand, but yeah, but, but uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, you know, I think the Olympic break will be good. Uh, I think I think we got one one more episode next week, and then I think they uh, go on the Olympic hiatus. So hopefully, and then I think there'll be two left after that. So yeah, you know, it's gonna be good. It's gonna yeah. feel like it. It's gonna be feel like they're gonna end something, and then they're gonna come back and be like, "Oh, this is where we left it." <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, and especially the way the CW has been promoting this show because it's, I mean, I literally like forgot they were coming back earlier in January because it was like, oh yeah, they're they're back. Uh, they're just doing a very terrible job of, of like getting behind their shows. Yeah, behind their shows, we always have issues with scheduling. Yeah. Oh man, but that is it for us tonight. Um, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yeah, before I do that, I have one correction from last week, and thanks to one of our listeners for, for pointing this out to me. Uh, Star Trek uh, Strange New Worlds, it doesn't start May 2nd, but it actually starts May 5th. So I just wanted to, to correct that So uh, before before we uh, wrapped up for tonight. But uh, you can find me on Twitter, and, and hopefully I don't spoil things for Sarah, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can follow me on Twitter at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. And our website is www.scenenerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. Bye.